Today, I wanna to talk about how you can maximize the gorgeous fall colors that you're gonna be shooting this year in Adobe Camera Roll. Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64academy.com and F64elite.com, where I teach you how to master Photoshop so you can make better photographs. This is Photoshop for photographers. And what we're talking about today is maximizing the amount of fall color you can get at the raw level in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. Now, before I show you this video, I'm also gonna tell you that at the end of this video or in the description below, you can also see how you can maximize these colors in Photoshop. So basically, I'm gonna show you how to set the foundation right here in Adobe Camera Raw before jumping into Photoshop to further push those colors along. Now, here's the thing. This happens to me all the time when I go out to shoot fall, fall foliage. I'm sure it's happening to you as well. You go out there, you think it's gonna be this epic, grandiose experience with these beautiful oranges and yellows, and oh, the green is just gonna be so beautifully intermixed in there, and then you take the image home and you're like, oh man, this sucks. <laughs> like It's all washed out and boring. Why is that? I saw some beautiful fall color there. And then you just kinda put those fall color images away and, and, and feel defeated a little bit. Well. I'm here to tell you that it probably has something to do with the way that your sensor is recording all of the colors that it's seeing. White balance sucks, okay? White balance is one of those things that we're gonna be constantly fighting against as photographers, and it really is gonna hurt you when it comes to uh, creating your fall images. If it's a little bit too blue, all those yellows and oranges are gonna look washed out. If it's too yellow, those yellows and oranges are gonna look like they mix together, and you're not gonna see any of that green. So what we're gonna do here is basically separate these colors out so we can make more beautiful Full fall foliage in our images. Now, what you're seeing here is a stock image. Unfortunately, we haven't had peak color yet here in Missouri, but we're on our way there. So I'll be going out here in a little bit to be shooting that. But with this stock image, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. These yellows, these reds, these oranges aren't at their maximum potential. They're being held back. Why? Probably from the amount of blue that's in this image. If we increase the yellow though, look what happens. We lose all those gorgeous greens and all of the yellows start to look like they're becoming more orange and the reds even start to move into the oranges. So this is not the place to maximize the color. This is the place where you dial that in so that it starts to look pretty darn good, but you're not trying to get the color here. Now you're probably thinking, Blake, you're gonna head to the color mixer, right? Because you can separate colors out here. And no, not right here at the raw level. Why? Because at the raw level, I don't have masking and I don't wanna do that here. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna show you how to do that in Photoshop though. So what I'm gonna do here at the raw level is actually go into the calibration section. And you're like, what? Calibration, nobody goes there. You're right, nobody does and they should be, especially if you're gonna be shooting fall foliage. What you're going to see here is red primary, green primary, and blue primary. Now, what's probably scaring you is the word that says primary after the color red. But as I've discussed this many times in my other tutorials about this calibration section, this right here uh, is actually where the Bayer Matrix sensor recording is 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 being is taking place. So basically, the red that you see here is not just the color red. It's actually a little bit of yellow. It's a little bit of green. It's a little bit of blue. Uh, the same thing with green because it's based on the Bayer matrix sensor and how it records that pixel data. If you don't want to try to consider any of the nerdery around that, that's okay. All you need to do here is exploit. So exploit the colors. Bring the saturation all the way up in the red. See what you get. Bring the saturation all the way up in the green. See what you get. Bring the saturation all the way up in the blue. See what you get you get a color vomit mess, all right? But what's beautiful here though, is we can see the potential of the color that's in our image and the color separation. So now we just dial these sliders down and start to work this into a way that this image actually starts to look pretty decent. Now, as I bring the saturation up in this red primary, look at where that's controlling a lot of this fall foliage here. That is beautiful. Look at how these oranges are really starting to pop out and they're slightly separated from the yellows. What will also help us separate that is the hue slider. So as we move the hue slider to the left and to the right, we're going to get this more into the magenta, uh, reddish magenta area, more into the yellow area. But this is where we're not separating colors. We're actually making colors come together. And that's not what we want to do here when we are trying to uh, explore our fall colors here. So I'm just going to bring this up just a little bit to get those yellows and those oranges a little bit more towards the orange. Now, if I look at the greens here, you can see that green is predominantly going to be for the um, evergreen trees that we have in the background here, but it's also doing what? It's bringing up our yellows because a lot of that yellow is existing in that green primary as well. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of manipulate the hue so I get this more towards the yellow rather than towards the green and then just leave that saturation about where it is right there. And then we'll go into the blue primary. Look at the blue primary here. Look at how we move this. It's blue. 
why is what what is going on what's happening here is that in the color blue or in the blue channel or what blue records the opposite of blue is yellow so a lot of our yellow is actually being controlled right here at this blue primary so if I, as i move this to the left we start to get some of that beautiful gorgeous orange fall foliage color and then we can amplify the saturation just a little bit more there and look very quickly at what we just did here before after before after the beauty of this folks is that we haven't even gone into our color mixer yet if you wanted to go into the color mixer here at the raw level you could i'm not going to show you that though because i want to do that in photoshop because i have masking and blend modes and blend if and all these other beautiful things that i can do with that this is where i'd say boom we've got our fall color beautifully exploited here now let's look at this image here where we don't have a whole lot of separation between the colors i'm going to do this magical thing where i press the auto button i know you're going to throw me under the bus that's driven by the ai bus driver but here's the deal the auto button in photoshop really just helps me expand the tones it doesn't really do much artistic things for me but this right here is that problem again if we move this towards the blue we get beautiful greens there because we want those greens to be beautiful in this scene but what do we lose we lose the gorgeous yellow and orange that we get in those trees we move this over to the yellow we get the gorgeous orange and and yellow in the trees but look what happens to the rest of the landscape it looks like it has jaundice or something like that like landscapes can't have jaundice but if they could it would look like this uh, we can try to move this towards the greens but then we just start it just starts getting washed out and pretty ugly so i'm just going to zero this out zero this out and head down to that calibration section again exploit move the saturation up and you can see there that in the reds, red primary is typically going to be that red and orange foliage. And then we can get the hue dialed in on that. We don't want it to go too close to the reds. We actually probably want that to be more uh, closer to the yellows. So we'll pull it this way a little bit. And then we'll go to the green primary, see what the saturation looks like in the green primary. And what's the hue of the green primary here? We're trying to get some separation between the green and the red and the yellow in this one. I don't think it's going to work out very well for us. This is the perfect example of how you can't really do this very well at the raw level and how we're going to need to go into Photoshop. But before we do that, let's try the blue primary. The blue primary, by bringing the saturation up, looks wonderful it's giving us a lot of color that would be a good baseline but we can't get good color separation here because we as as we move this more towards the green we are losing our yellow and our orange so that is not going to work for us either so what we need to do here is basically just leave this where it is right here here's our before and after yes it's wonderful it's magically better but we're going to bring both of these images into photoshop so what i want you to do is i want you to watch this next video because i'm going to show you how i can further explore these colors these fall colors these gorgeous fall colors in photoshop using things like masking selective color and the HSL adjustment layer. So click this video, this video right here will take you into the video on how we're going to make these images better in Photoshop.